Hello everyone, it's Bruns here, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about the new prestige mode that launched this week on Evil Dead the game, all the good things, all the bad things, what could change to make it better and also what are the changes that Saber has already implemented, the listening to the community. Of course this is like the very first time they're launching a prestige system within Evil Dead the game so like everything that they launch new they always tweak with it later. Let's talk about the good things of this prestige system, why is it good? and why should we praise Saber for attempting to give us something that we've been asking you know which is more reasons to play the game unlock some new cool stuff potentially first thing I would say this is a step in the right direction so we've been asking for it we received it we're going in the right direction it's not perfect it's far from perfect but we're getting something we can see they are dedicated and I've been saying this with every single patch that they do with every new release of new characters whatever they are putting the effort they're putting the hours in they are working to deliver a game that is appealing to us and and that introduces potentially different mechanics the core game loop of course is the same but they are trying to diversify and i'm not surprised if one day they introduce some new objectives and radicalize things a bit but anyway we're not talking about that this is a step in the right direction right and then the second thing i would say is challenges they give you something to work towards and i know challenges they are a bit generic We'll talk a little bit more about that later, but we've got challenges. It's something that we've been asked. It could it be better? Of course it could be better. It could be daily challenges. It could be weekly challenges, but we've got some challenges, which I think is great. Third thing good about this prestige mode is that we'll make your character stronger. Once you hit level 26 with the survivors, you get one extra point and then so on until level 30 and with the demon is the same from level 46 to level 50. So you're going to have potentially five extra points to spend on your skill tree. That's going to allow for new builds, you can experiment a little bit more you're gonna get stronger of course they're trying something new and the least we can do is give them the benefit of the doubt so the fourth good thing about this prestige system is that you're gonna get the new portraits so it will show your dedication to the game or to the character that you are prestiging so for every character demon or survivor you're gonna get new portraits for each prestige level it will show that you've been grinding this game for a long time you dedicated your time to this specific player it's what you expect from a prestige system right i would say that just portraits and screamers are not quite enough or what people were expecting but hey it is what it is the fifth good thing about this prestige mode is you retain everything you have earned so far so all the skill points portraits any abilities that you earn so far you will retain those forever and the last thing i would say is good about this is that after prestige one when you go back to level one you're going to start grinding to level 26 or 46 you can save your spirit points points because as you progress and as you level up you will get those challenges done so by the time you say you get to level 46 and then you have to complete the challenges still you're probably going to have done at least half of them by then because you're going to have played so much to get those levels up and then you're going to have all these spirit points that you can just top up your challenges and then boom you work a prestige level once you level up all your characters to level 25 and you decide to choose one or two to prestige there's no more need to spend the extra points you can save it just play the game just enjoy it and once you're ready once you've got to level 46 or level 26 or whatever then you can spend whatever spirit points you've accumulated to just bump up the challenges and then get through to the next prestige level so all these are good things and i think it's going in the right direction right now let's talk about the bad stuff as i said this is not a perfect system and one of the first thing that crossed my mind when i saw the challenges was what the hell <laughs> this is a very very slow burner right so to get these characters leveled up let's talk about survivors right survivors you will have to spend 220,000 points to get your character max level also level 25 let's say once you got there say you don't have any challenges done like most of us who have been playing the game for the past six months you wanted to put the points on the challenges it will cost you around half a million points to prestige level one and then that's going to reset you to level one and then you have to go up to level 26 so you're going to spend another 230,000 points maybe to get to level 26 and then you have to do the challenges again if you just keep spending your spirit points according to some people's maths is getting up to 16 million points to get a survivor up to prestige level 5. That's a lot. One of the other bad things about this prestige mode is that it creates a bigger 
discrepancy between new and seasoned players. The discrepancy I'm talking about is the skill points you get with the prestige levels. Anyone who's prestige level 5, you're gonna have those 5 extra points on your skill tree, while someone who's completely new to the game, if you're level 10, you're gonna have 10 points on your skill tree. It will create bigger discrepancies, and that might create a sense of urgency that you just have to play, you have to get the spirit points. It becomes a big grind. Maybe this is what the devs want, right? This is what anybody who launches a game anybody who launches a product wants consumers to do they want players or the consumers to stay hooked on it just play for longer to watch for longer maybe they're doing what works for them business-wise but the question is does it work for us as well another bad thing is that this is not really a prestige system because we're grinding for skill points rather than cosmetics that will show your dedication right the prestige system from call of duty for instance you would grind for new badges for new cosmetics so you can really show off i've played this game for this long so my character looks this great i've got this really great badge that nobody else has or only a few people have this is what prestige is about prestige means reputation it doesn't mean stronger, right? Of course, you might be more experienced in the game, but not stronger because you got more skill points. You're more skilled in the game because you played for longer. And that's what prestige really is about. It's about someone looking at your character and thinking, whoa, he's played this game for long, but not Ooh, he's got five extra skill points on his tree, he's stronger. So I think this prestige system, the way people were hoping it was going to be, maybe is not quite what happened, or some people were expecting more skill points. I think Saber planted the seed there. They said you will unlock some new abilities for your characters, yada yada. That is what's happening. They've nerfed some characters now, or most of them, because you unlock all those skills again and just buff them up to what they were pre-prestige once you hit level 1 or even level 5. Another bad point are the challenges. And I know I said the challenges were a good point, but they are also a bad point because one, too many spirit points, and two, they're too generic. They are base per class. It just feels like it's just been slapped together. There wasn't much thought about it. You can see it's all kind of same. You complete 60 matches, perform 435 finishes, or you had to perform finishes on the first prestige level anyway. And then here, more headshots. Collect 1,320 bottles of pink F. I, I don't think that's a bad one. And here, more headshots, more finishes, complete 81 matches. It's all kind of samey. It's not terrible, but it's, it's not great variety. It's not like use an X number of legendary weapons or it could be perform so many headshots with a revolver it could be a little bit more specific it could incentivize you to play with different weapons but anyway this is just my opinion maybe maybe it's fine as it is but you guys can tell me what you think the other bad thing about this prestige mode is about casual players so casual players are a lot less likely to prestige more than one character to prestige one let's be honest it's almost like casual players end up losing on this one because they just don't play enough the game and then you just don't get you're just not gonna get those skill points so hardcore players will get rewarded a lot more than casual players and i guess it's fine because you, you will show that dedication and all that but if those players are gonna end up with stronger characters because of that that's where the imbalance is so I think this could just lead to problems. The other problem about the prestige mode is it seems to be creating more lobby disconnects. Now you can see people's levels and people are pulling out from games if the level discrepancy is too high. Maybe this is a separate issue. So if you and your team, you all level 100 or whatever and nobody's prestiged and then you go against a demon prestige level five, you're already thinking, crap. He's got five extra skill points, he's stronger. And the same goes the other way around. Low level demons are disconnecting if they go against high level survivors. So it just seems to be creating a little bit more problems with the lobby there. I think if anything, this will prompt them to finally fix matchmaking. But again, we're gonna have to wait and see if they have any plans to fix this. I really wish they do because someone posted the other day, this is not a game, this is a lobby simulator because you keep going in and out of lobbies because people keep disconnecting. Sometimes you can spend quite a few minutes in 
in there, especially if you're playing Survivor because you just stay on that queue so long. Anyway, I think these are the, all of the bad things I see with this prestige mode. Now, what are the solutions that we could have with this prestige mode? One, they've already given us, which is an increase on the spirit points that you earn per match and when you level up. So now you gain twice as much spirit points per match and you also get 30% more spirit points when you level up your user level. That's brilliant news and this is probably one of the things that can help offset all that's going on with the new prestige mode. But to be fair, I don't think this is the best solution. What they could have done with this is just leave things as they were and then introduce those daily challenges that I keep going on about. And with each daily challenge, you gain a big lump sum of spirit points. And then they could also introduce weekly challenges, which means if you complete a weekly challenge, you go up a level straight away. There were better ways of doing it. And I think they're just being reactive to the community by doing this now. But it, it is welcome. I'm not going to say it's not, but they, they could have thought about this before. Another thing they could do, they could give spirit points or prestige levels for free to anyone who has logged in a set number of hours already. People have played this game for six months now. They could just give a prestige level or two to them for a character of their choice. So they don't have to do the whole grinding again. Because remember, We've been grinding this game for six months now, or you guys have at least. And what have you got? You got one or two prestige level characters out of 16. Well, 20 if you count the demons. By six months time, you would have expect to have prestige more of your characters. So here are my conclusions with this prestige mode. Prestige mode wasn't made so that everyone prestige every character within three months. That's not what the studio intended. It was intended to last longer than that, so that people play the game for longer. That's what the studio wants. Someone's probably done the maths on how long is it gonna take to prestige every single character in the game. Someone tell me that down in the comments. I don't know how long it's gonna take. In essence, it wasn't made so you prestige every single character in a few months, and then what's left to do? We're back to square one. And then my other conclusion about this is that this is definitely a step in the right direction and the devs are obviously listening to the community and they're watching the numbers and they're already taking action to try and balance things out better there's lots of options there's lots of ways this could go we could go all south or they can really try and perfect this anyway guys if you enjoyed this video if you watched until now please drop me a like please leave me your comments let me know what you think is good what you think is bad on this prestige mode i probably missed a lot of stuff that you guys are thinking so let us know let's discuss if you're here if you're watching this this is because in some level you enjoy playing the game so let's all try to be positive and be constructive about it if you want more content like this hit the subscribe button i will see you all next time